Every year, more than 170,000 children in the developing world are born with cleft lip and palate deformities. In Zimbabwe, hundreds of people travel great distances when they hear about a cleft mission. Many mothers believe they did something wrong or that the gods are cursing them. Many are told that their baby should be left to die. They asked me, what did you do to your child? Others said, did you cut him with something? But I just say, oh, I just born here like that. Once I met an 82-year-old great-grandmother named Sarah. She sold all of her goats in order to have money to buy bus tickets to the capital city so her great-granddaughter Lubelihe could have a chance at surgery. Lubelihe has no father. The mother just took the baby from South Africa and come and dump her to the grandmother. People, they look at her and feel sorry for her. Some they laugh. They used to say, ah, we don't want to play with you because your teeth are out. Without an operation, these children often live in isolation and have difficulty eating, breathing, and speaking. As a result, most of them, like Lubelihe, do not attend school and are ostracized from the community. special moments of joy in a recovery room. After surgery, Lubelihe was swollen, but still her bubbly self. A couple days later, we took her home with Sarah and Snadia, our translator. It was an eight-hour journey by car, and then you get off the paved road for a couple of hours. Just driving it, you get a sense of the sacrifice Lubelihe's great-grandmother made, from selling her goats, to walking hours in 100-degree heat, to get to a paved road, to catch a bus. live in this hut with only distant relatives. The rest of their family fled to South Africa. But Sarah has hope now for her great-granddaughter, that she can have a future like the rest of the children in their community. Munyarazi, however, was not as fortunate. He lived 35 years as an outcast. If you look at me, if I look at myself, I look at the mirror, I just say that no. Is there anyone who is like me? How many are we? And even up to now, can't even believe this is happening to, to me after 35 years. Munyarazi also grew up in a rural village far from the capital city. He told us his father abandoned his family after he was born and that his community rejected him as well as his mother and sisters in fear they were witches, all because of his cleft lip. A couple days after surgery, we drove Munyarazi home. Swollen and sore, but very excited for his mother to see him.
What I love about David's work is that it brings hope to the hopeless. We first met in Africa. I was a CNN international journalist doing a follow-up to a program I filmed and produced. We travel now as a family from Zimbabwe, Rwanda, Guatemala, Nepal, Bhutan. <laughs> when you live in an area, you become more invested. I get to see David's long-term commitment to his patients and the surgical teams he operates with. Some of his work includes surgically creating ears from rib cartilage for children born with microtia in Guatemala, reconstructing faces in rural Nigeria for survivors of Noma, a flesh-eating disease. His facial trauma work is greatly valued because few local surgeons have the skills in developing countries. So he teaches. With limited resources, he empowers local surgeons and residents to care for their patients better and ultimately save more lives. No matter what, we are all human beings. We should all have the right to surgical care. We hope our children will become global citizens to understand need and feel empowered to find solutions. For now, they give their books and stuffed animals to their father's patients. But in the future, I hope they will follow in his footsteps. <laughs> Together, we can make a difference.